Welcome to the University of Queensland School of Architecture series introducing Grasshopper and Rhino. Now we're going to keep working on our simple tower and what we want to do is uh, make a facade between each of these floors that we've just um, created. Now we can um, use the same input parameters to help um, construct this new facade element and in some ways it's a very similar process perhaps that we did when we made the um, the slab so we could probably use the same function which is the extrude. Now before we sort of jump away and just simply plug things into here what we have to be careful is remember when we selected our curves to make the slab we also selected three curves so that we could get these holes for our um, cores to come through. So we might have to um, re-parameterize the facade uh, in a different way so that we select just the outside curve. Now we can actually go back and just turn off some of the geometry just so we make it a bit clearer what we're doing. So to do that you click on the element, right click, preview and then you go again, right click, preview it'll bring us back to the boundary surface, right click, preview. Now that doesn't delete the geometry, it just turns it off. Now what this actually helps us do as well is kind of reverse engineer um, routines that other people might have done. So often what you can do is if you're uncertain about how things are working and you're trying to figure out the flow of information you can go from the geometries on the far right of a sequence and then just progressively turn them off and keep working sort of left up the chain assuming that they're plugging them in left to right and then you can generally figure out what's um, feeding into what. Now in this instance we're going to have to introduce a new curve parameter and because it's a parameter don't forget we're trying to find these parameter inputs um, which is generally a, a dark sort of hexagon and we're going to right click on that and call it the facade we'll just call it the facade so we'll select the outside curve right click set one curve so we've now got our correct input so we're going to then input our curve into the base profile of the extrude and the distance is quite easy because the um, height of each facade floor by floor is going to be the same distance floor to floor so we're going to again don't forget we have to put in a translation vector which is the direction Z direction which is straight up so we're going to connect in our floor to floor distance and then connect it into our extrude so we've got a our facade and when we adjust the floor to floor our facade changes as well as the spacing of the slabs so we can then perhaps do the same as what we've done through here with the move tool so we can call up a move okay and remember that we can then move it in the same um, number of times as the sort of uh, number of floors and the distance floor to floor so we can come out from the back of this parameter so that's the translation vector and that's the actual geometry we want to duplicate so we've got a bunch of, of facades and now if we turn on our slabs we've got slabs and our facade but we've actually got a slight problem here because it's just the way that the numbers work we're going to have nine uh, ten floors sorry one two three four five six seven eight nine ten floors and we also have one two three five six seven eight nine ten facades but the top facade is always going to be in air because if you've got a 10 story building with 10 slabs you're only going to need 9 facades so we need to figure out a way of, of deleting this um, top facade element 
Now, it's not like CAD where you just sort of hit the delete key and, and take that away. We've actually got to work through it parametrically. Now, we can see here that the copy and duplicate is just controlled by this um, series of numbers. And in fact, what we want to do with the facade is just trim that um, end number off the list. So we could just from number of floors put minus one, but every time we sort of change this, it's going to affect the number that comes into here. So what we're going to do is do it fully parametrically, and we're going to call up a function which um, pulls up the the, li the length of this list here. And if we go list uh, length, which is up here, and you should be able to find that in list if we go control alt information there it is sets list and it's in there so here's our list length that we want to um, pull up so if we pull up a panel here okay so here's the geometry okay so we can see here there's 10 elements in that list. Now if we plug that into there and that into here, it's giving us a number that says there's 10 elements in that list. And if we adjust this, it'll just keep telling us how many elements are in that list. You can see the number changing there. So this number, which is the last number in the list, will be the element that we want to remove from the list. We're going to tell when we do the copy, just ignore that one. So we're going to what's called cull that list, that element from the list. So we're going to cull a number and that number is going to be the length of that list. Okay, and here so we're going to input the geometry so it's going to then cull the last element of that list so we'll dial back the number of floors so we can see it a bit more clearly but it kind of looks like it hasn't worked and this is where it, sometimes it gets a bit tricky so what we need to do is it's copying the elements through here so that's the copy of the, the slab, but we can't actually see the fact that it has actually worked because you can see if we click on there, there's one short. But because we've got both of these geometries turned on, we can't see the effect. So what we need to do is go to the move here, turn that on to preview, and then we'll actually see what it is that we want which is the correct result. Now, as a final element, what we can do is then collect these elements into a surface element or a surface parameter, um, a BREP, which is a boundary representation. And we're going to call this one the glass and we go uh, B rep and we're going to call this the slabs and if we collect those and we collect those then these are the elements that we know we can then bake into our Rhino software so that we can parameterize the setup of the tower, bake it in through here. So if we right click bake, right click bake, and then that fixes it in the Rhino space. So that ends that little part of the simple tower. Now, if you join us next time, we're going to look at how we're going to organise the information 
on this uh, routine a little bit better so that other people can follow it.